life is 50-50. 50% of the time you're going to have positive events, positive situations, and the other 50% is going to be negative, right? Because our lives are multifaceted and we're going to experience loss. We're going to experience sadness. We're also going to have those high moments, right? And there's, there's this balance and understanding that it's not always going to go our way is that's what, how life is, right? So I think this is a, a really um, powerful thought to have is that, okay, if I see that things are not going the way that I plan. Like, what is this teaching me? Where is the lesson in this? And then we can move forward from there. Because resiliency is about really understanding that we can survive things. We can survive some of the pitfalls in our lives. And sometimes people will get so stuck in those moments that they can't see into the future. And I feel like because we know that life is not always going to be rainbows and unicorns, that we can see, well, what do I have control over? Right? And then move on from there. Welcome back, corporate lovelies. Today, welcome back to Secrets of a Corporate Game. So many people are trying to navigate a corporate world that is laden with secrets, cleverly hidden, and unspoken rules to a game that most employees don't even know they're playing. On this podcast, we try to give you a peek behind the curtain and unveil some of those secrets with tips and tricks that you can apply today to start taking control of your career and progress up the ladder faster. Welcome back, corporate lovelies. Today, we are talking about mindset mastery and work-life balance with Teresa Hildebrand. She is a certified master life coach. She is a mom of two. She is creator of the CH method. She is the host of the podcast, Organized Chaos, which I will admit I have been absolutely binging for like the last two weeks. And anybody in my program has gotten links to listen to some of my favorite episodes. And she did all of this while working full-time, managing sustainability programs and balancing, being a wife, a mother, and experiencing her own type of burnout. So we're really excited to have you on the show, Teresa. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. Well, why don't you tell people a little bit about your background and what you're doing now and kind of what they can expect in today's episode? Yes, of course. So yeah, like um, Kendall said, I was uh, managing sustainability programs. So I I worked at UCLA Health and I was climbing that corporate ladder. And I thought that that was what I was going to do. And when we started having children, that completely changed. Um, It didn't happen overnight, but that kind of vision of having a career uh, started to kind of switch a little bit when um, we actually had our first child. Uh, He was born prematurely. And we thought, wow, like, how are we going to take care of this child um, who needs a lot of help right now? We were both working full time. Actually, my husband was a police officer. um, So it was a very chaotic time for us. And, um, you know, it started to kind of make the shift a little bit into, you know, what is it that we can do to really kind of help create some type of harmony in our life? And I was actually struggling with my health at the time. And we started to, you know, dig in a little bit deeper into that and started to focus on our well-being. And it actually uh, went into creating a business around it. And as we started to build this business, we started to realize that this might be something that I could be doing full time. And I could also be at home with our kids. So that is kind of how that transpired over time. And I I left my full-time career to stay at home, but also work on building our business. And it started off as a health and wellness business, and it transformed into life and performance coaching. So now both my husband and I are life and performance coaches, and we absolutely love what we do. I say we're kind of living the dream life, even though we're still, we still have goals and everything, but we are truly living a life by design. That's amazing. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about like organized chaos and your business now, right? Because you guys focus on a lot of different aspects of optimizing across your life. I'd love to hear a little bit more about like, what does that mean for you? And what's kind of that value? Yeah, and I call I call it organized chaos, because that's just kind of how I can describe 
what our life was like. And it still is to some extent because we go through different seasons, right? But um, it was kind of like this uh, period of time where there was so much going on. We were juggling so many plates at the same time. And it kind of felt like it was just this constant battle of trying to stay and like keep the calm, right? Um, but with two kids and kind of like the careers that we had, um, it wasn't always possible. Um, but what ended up happening was I started to kind of learn certain things that I didn't realize were in my control. So a lot of what I may be talking about today, mindset, I started to focus on my personal growth journey. And it really started when I was working full time, I started to read books and start listening to podcasts. And that really kind of like, started to uh, spark something in me that I didn't realize that I had. There was this energy that started to um, really kind of develop within me. And I started to really focus on well, what else can I learn? learn what other skills are out there. And a lot of it had to do with confidence at the time, because even though I had a career, I had this position and I was creating this, these climate initiatives and working with other people and corporate executives, there was always this kind of like imposter syndrome that I was feeling. And I thought, well, if I focus on my confidence and try to, to really better that, uh, you know, self-worth it would kind of transform my life. And it really did. And it all started with just listening to audiobooks on my way to work. So it was kind of like that, like drive time university where you start to listen to certain things rather than, you know, listening to music. I was like, well, what kind of book can I listen to on the way to work and back? Because I live in Los Angeles and there's a lot of time to kill in a car. So a lot of that learning, learning of new skills and methodologies happened on my drive to work. That's awesome. So you talked a lot about how mindset has shifted and been a huge part of your journey. So mm -hmm. how would you advise people who are listening, who are probably still in the corporate world to really start to develop that growth mindset and enhance their performance and their resiliency within the corporate space? Yeah. And I, th and I think about like a growth mindset different than how most people think. I think that people will start to just think about, well, I just have to have kind of like this positive outlook on things. And it's all about positivity and thinking about it that way. And I think I'll like really truly what it is, is that we start to develop this uh, shift into thinking about opportunities. And what can I, um, what are some opportunities that are out there that I can move into? And when I think about in the corporate world, you know, there's, hey, I, I want to develop my skills and I want to get that promotion and I want to better myself. I think about it where it's like a lot of the things that we feel happen to us, there's different ways to approach it. One, we can, you know, build a scarcity mindset around like not having the confidence to really go for that job or really have that converse, like difficult conversation with employees or with your boss. Um, or you can start to think about it like, what do I have control over? And what I truly have control over is my perception of things and how I react to things. So we can't control outside circumstances, but we can control how we perceive things and how we react to them. And that's a super valuable skill to have because we start to see things differently. And we start to kind of develop this uh, pattern of habits that is because belief drives behavior. So whatever we believe about ourselves or whatever our thoughts are about certain situations, that's what drives our feelings and our behaviors. And we start to see other outcomes. Huge thank you to today's sponsor for our episode, Symposia Academia. They assist individuals to get into cybersecurity and you do not need a degree or any prior work experience. They'll help you land a GRC analyst position in cybersecurity with their four-step process, which includes training and internship, interview preparation, and then on-the-job support. In order to get started, go ahead 
ahead and head over to the link www.symposia.com slash channel dash partner slash KB dash three. You can also find this link down in the show notes, but again, it is symposia.com slash channel dash partner slash KB dash three and check them out. So a lot of times what I would see is if someone wanted to advance their career, a lot of times they felt like, well, I don't have control over who likes me or not. You know, it's kind of like about who you know, but in reality, like that is not really going to take you where you want to go. It's not going to give you the ability to see the opportunities and what you can do and what you have control over. So rather than thinking, well, I don't know, you know, what so-and-so is going to do. And, you know, I I can't really um, find like the the things that I need to do to in order to get this position, you start to think about it in a different way where, okay, what do I have control over? Okay, what I have control over is how I perceive things. So I'm going to bring all of the skills that I have and I'm going to see what I can develop in order to get that position and how that's going to make me feel is empowered. And when I'm feeling empowered, I take specific actions that will really make me stand out, right? And so it's like we do have some control over what we can do rather than thinking that, well, it's it's who you know, right? Yeah. There's so many things, Teresa, that you mentioned that I I absolutely love. I often will quote the like, do the best you can over the things you have control over and leave the rest to God because mm-hmm. you don't have control over those things. There's no sense building ourselves right. up and angst over them. Mm-hmm. But there is that focus of how do we do the best with the things that are in our control? To your point, upskilling, communication, mm-hmm. relationship building. Where do mm-hmm. we spend our efforts so that those can be effective? And I think to the latter point of what you were sharing that. Yes, there are always going to be times in corporate where we don't have control over how the other person's going to respond to a situation. Mm -hmm. Is our boss who's telling us we're going to get promoted going to follow through on that promise? Mm -hmm. Is the coworker who is notoriously difficult to work with going to blow up in the meeting that we have later? Mm -hmm. But there is so much that we can do. And I think that that's something very similar you and I have in common is when I think of how I coach, it's you need to exhaust every option of what you have control over to set yourself up for the optimum amount of success. If it doesn't work, then we pivot and we create a new strategy and we could look for a different boss or we could leave or we can do these other actions. Mm -hmm. But there's so much you do have control over in your space. And oftentimes I think people discount their own power Mm -hmm. of how capable are you to show up in a space and do something that's going to be valuable to yourself. And we think there's so many outside forces. And in some ways there are, uh, Mm -hmm. but I love hearing you say that there are things you can influence, right? And this applies your corporate life, but also your personal life and your relationship. Exactly. Um, I think that's great. And you talk a lot about how this helps set you up for success, helps build your confidence. What does this do in terms of kind of that resiliency piece, right? We're going to face those setbacks when things don't go our way. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of coach around being resilient to potentially those negative directions that our lives can take? Yeah. And I think one thing that is, you know, truly a game changer to understand is that life is 50 50. 50% of the time, you're going to have positive events, positive situations, and the other 50% is going to be negative, right? Because our lives are multifaceted and we're going to experience loss. We're going to experience sadness. We're also going to have those high moments, right? And there's there's this balance and understanding that it's not always going to go our way is that's what, how life is, right? So I think this is a, a really um, powerful thought to have is that, okay, if I see that things are not going the way that I plan. Like, what is this teaching me? Where is the lesson in this? And then we can move forward from there. Because resiliency is about really understanding that we can survive things. We can survive some of the pitfalls in our lives. And sometimes people will get so stuck in those moments that they can't see into the future. And I feel like because we know that life is not always going to be rainbows and unicorns, that 
we can see, well, what do I have control over? Right. And then move on from there. Yeah. I love Teresa, like the calmness that you bring to these situations, right? Um, there's a Olympic athlete who gave an interview and they said, you know, how do you deal with it all? Right. Cause there's a, a lot of mental health implications and burnout implications mm-hmm. when it comes to being a, an extreme athlete, right. A, a, yeah. any level, Whether that's D one in college or you're a professional athlete or Olympian. Mm-hmm. And she said, get used to feeling terrible 30% of the time. Mm-hmm. You'll feel okay 50% of the time and you should feel great about 20% of the time. Mm-hmm. She's like, and once you wrap your head around that that's your ratio, it's a lot easier to feel bad 30% of the time versus yeah. so many of us today, I think, especially with social media influences and and the, the positivity movement that we think we we need to be perfect, feel perfect all the time. Mm-hmm. And the reality is the life ebbs and flows. And so I love that mm-hmm. you're calling that out because- it, it can be easy to get into our own heads and feel like, oh, well, I don't feel great today. Maybe I'm not in the right career. Maybe I'm not mm-hmm. in a relationship with the right person. Maybe I'm not doing the right things with my time. And it's important to be able to differentiate between a season mm-hmm. and a negative place. And so I love that we're calling yeah. attention to that. And there's that great connection here between being resilient in the tough times, but also creating like a healthy balance right? Mm -hmm. Between your professional life and your personal life and how those things kind of coexist. I think that, you know, the popular term right now is like work-life balance. I heard that this year we're changing it. Now it's life-work balance because life is more important, Mm -hmm. whichever way you Mm -hmm. want to take it. So I'd love to hear, like, how do you advise on like maintaining that healthy balance there? Yeah. And I, I think that we want to think about this in the most human way possible because we are human and we can't possibly balance everything in our lives at the same time but we can create some type of harmony and sometimes i i think about it in the sense of there was this book that i read called the one thing um i forget the the name of the author but he was talking about when it comes to certain areas of your lives some are made out like if you're if you're talking about juggling like say some balls right Some of them are rubber balls. And if you drop a rubber ball, it just bounces back up. And I kind of uh, associate that with things like your, your job, right? So if something happens at your job, you kind of mess up. It's okay. You kind of, you know, pick yourself back up again. But areas like your health and your family, those are like made out of glass. And if you drop one of those, you may crack those. And those are really hard to to deal with and repair, right? So when I think about the different areas of our lives, we I also have a, um, a I'm the co-founder and co-host of a YouTube channel called Modern Leadership with my husband, and we talk about the areas of family, family connection, health, and business. And the family part and the health part are kind of like really high up there. They're some of our priorities because those are the areas that are most delicate. And when I, you know, when I work with clients and they come to me sometimes with a lot of business or career um, issues, a lot of times it's things that are happening in their personal life. And once they start digging into um, the issues of personal life or they're having a disconnect with a in a relationship or they they don't feel like they're taking care of themselves, once they start focusing on that, everything else starts to flourish. They get more clarity, more focus, more energy to be able to give to the other areas of their lives, like their career, their work, their business. So the way that I think about like this work-life harmony or balance, however you want to call it, it's just about choosing where you want to focus in and you know flourish in those areas. And a lot of times it's around your personal life and then everything else starts to fall into place. It's great advice that you're sharing. And I'm going to connect this back to something that you said at the top of the call, which is how different your perspective was Mm post-children, right? And I did a a recent episode about this for Mother's Day where I talked about, similarly, I am the type A career-driven, career-oriented 
person. I was going to be a CFO before I was 30. I had all these great plans. I was working, you know, extra hours, nights and weekends, going in early when I needed to and making sure that I was progressing my career. And I remember right before I had my daughter, I met with a, an executive friend of mine who was a, a woman and I was like, how did I'm so nervous. Like, what if this sets me back? What if having kids like slows down my career? And she, I'll never forget. She like smiled. She laughed. She looked at me and she goes, let's have this conversation when you're back. Cause I have a really strong feeling you're not going to care at all. (laughs) And I was like, no, my career is like the most important thing to me. It's my number one priority. It's like my lifeblood. And I had my daughter and I came back to work and I was like, you're right. This is not worth it. (laughs) (laughs) But suddenly everything had shifted that for me, my kids became such a higher priority. My family became such a higher priority. Mm -hmm. Finding balance to your point that was focused around my overall wellness, where my career would fit into that as an aspect that facilitated other things. It became a significantly smaller part of my identity. Mm -hmm. And so I'd love to get your take when we talk about this, a lot of the facets that you're mentioning, there's a lot of personal identity association that happens Mm -hmm. here, right? We think our identity is our title. It is our job. Mm -hmm. It is our being a mother. And so I'd love to get your take when we think of creating this harmony and we think of understanding the highest priorities to us, how does this influence like our sense of self and that identity as well? Yeah, I think it it does. And especially when you're coming from the corporate world, and then let's say you move into being a stay-at-home mom or, you know, working on your uh, business, I really had a hard time going from the corporate world to home life. And in my mind, I thought, well, this is going to be great. I'm going to have so much time to spend with my kids and I'm going to be able to work on our business and we're going to blow it up. And I had all of these wonderful ideas and visions of what life was going to look like. However, like I said, life is 50-50. So first off, I felt like I did lose my identity in a sense because to me, I was a career mom. I was a working mom. And then when I took that hat off, it was really hard for me to navigate it all, navigate some of the changes. Even with being at home, I wasn't talking to anybody. I didn't realize how much uh, the social interaction was going to affect me when I didn't have that. Because when I was going to work, I had friends, I would go to lunch, I would chit chat and all of that. And just having other people to talk to, that was. Um, kind of a big thing for me. And I I didn't realize that until I went to therapy. Um, And I started to talk through these things. And then also my husband got really sick uh, six months after I left my job. And then it was like, okay, well, he can't work. He physically can't work. And now it's like all on me. Like I need to figure this out. So there was a lot of different emotions and different things. But Yeah, I felt like I had kind of lost that identity until I kind of rebuilt a different identity, right? Um, Because I really, I knew that I I needed to be there for my children and figure this out, but also that it was okay. We make pivots all the time in life. And for me to say that I'm I'm not a career mom anymore, I'm not a working mom anymore. Anymore, I'm, you know, a work from home mom. I mean, I could call myself whatever I wanted, but I just had to be okay with this new pivot that I had and the new life that I had. Yeah, I'm. I'm so glad to hear you say this, Teresa, because when I think of like myself, and I'm sure so many people who are listening, this will resonate. Is like I still have my corporate job. I run a whole business. I have two young children. I've been married for uh, 12 years now, and it is hard to balance it all. But Mm -hmm. part of the reason I keep my corporate job, aside from the fact that I'm one of those weird people who genuinely loves it, is because the idea of not having it is uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. right? It is part of my identity where if people ask what I do now, I still often will default to the corporate answer rather than the fact. Mm -hmm that I am an entrepreneur and a business owner, just because it's what I know. And most people are able to understand that more easily. It speaks a language they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And hearing that you had your own journey of reinventing that identity, I think is so important for many of us who are 
we want to do a career pivot, or they are thinking of starting an entrepreneurial effort, or they are in corporate. Maybe they're the first person in their family who is in corporate. And so it's Mm -hmm. a different type of identity that we're building. And so learning to get comfortable with yourself, having somebody to express those thoughts to, whether that's therapist, friend, spouse, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is all very important for everybody. I feel like identity is the biggest struggle that we have right now because there's so many people we can be. Yeah. How do you hone in on who you are? Um, So I love all of this. So if people are listening to this and they're thinking, this is great. I needed this mindset refresh. I needed a new perspective. What's one piece of tangible advice that you would give them where you would say, hey, tomorrow, go do this. And this will kind of help start to get you on that, that more harmonious path and also help with kind of those mindset shifts. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is uh, awareness awareness of, you know, what is going on in our brains and, you know, not to like, you know, overanalyze our thoughts. um, But I think it's really important to just be cognizant of how we react to things and how we respond to things. Because I think we have so much power um, in our brains, like our brains are wired to uh, first automate, and also to keep us safe. And a lot of times we will uh, focus on like fear and doubt and all of that. Um, But I, I I think that the the biggest thing is just to remind yourself that you're human and that you are going to feel, you know, negative sometimes and that's okay. It's just about becoming aware and just really kind of, you know, thinking about like, how is this affecting me? What is like, what are my first thoughts? What are some of the stories that are coming up because of a particular situation? And how do I want to show up? And then we can kind of say, well, okay, you know, I, I want to show up in a better way. I want to think about this in a different way. I want to reframe it. Um, but I think just about like, like what is coming up? What are some of the patterns that I start to see about how I'm thinking about different situations? I think is like the first step in kind of understanding like what makes us tick and what um, what we can do to actually use that to our advantage. Because once we start to realize, okay, I see this pattern, but I have control now and I can actually change it and reframe it, that can start to uh, create different things in your life, uh, create momentum and adjust um, kind of like a different way of seeing things. Love that. So Teresa, if people are listening to this episode and they loved it as much as I did, where do they go if they want to find you and they want to get more information about what you're doing? Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram or Facebook and I am Teresa at Teresa Hildebrand uh, underscore coaching. So that's where I hang out the most. I do have a LinkedIn profile, but I'm, I'm not, you know, always there. Um, but you can find me there as well as Teresa Hildebrand. Um, I also have a podcast um, called Organized Chaos. So if you want to check that out as well, um, I talk about all things mindset, organization, productivity, and work-life balance. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Teresa, for coming on the show. If you guys listened to this episode and you loved it, make sure you give us five stars. Feel free to comment your questions or your thoughts below. Otherwise, Teresa, thank you so much. We'll definitely have to have you back. Thank you for having me.